Okay, in this video we're talking about hypothesis testing still, and now we're talking about the type of test and the probability of a type 1 error. In the last video where we discussed the critical value, I left off by saying the probability of a type 1 error in that problem was at most the 2.5% alpha that we chose for the problem. We want to make sure we understand why it was at most. I left off there and didn't explain why, so that's what this video is designed to do, to help us do two things to know when we look at a problem, problem, what type of test we're conducting, and then to know what that says about the probability of type one error. So let's get right into it, it's very easy actually. All you have to do is consider the fact that there are only three unique combinations of HO and HA that you can have. You can have a statement that involves less than or equal to for HO, and that would lead to a statement in HA of greater than. That's one scenario. You could also have the scenario where HO is greater than or equal to, and that would lead to the scenario that HA must be less than, right? Because these always have to express opposing points of view. If you're not less than or equal to something, you must be greater than. And then finally, the last scenario, HO could have the equal to sign, and HA therefore would have to say not equal to. Those are the only three cases we have. It turns out that when you do your drawing and you're trying to find your critical value, that for this scenario, it's going to be a right tail test. We always look at HA to determine that. So we're going to look at our HA value. And you can think of it like a little arrow, right? A little arrow pointing. Which way is it pointing? It's pointing to the right. And that means we're going to have a right tail test. So that means our rejection region is going to be here. The reason why I would say we reject HO here is because, again, if it's greater than for HA, then the large data of that sample data is going to cause us to contradict this less than or equal to statement here, right? To reject HO whenever the data indicates that we have a mean that's higher than we expect, a sample mean higher than we expect, right? So again, but it's like an arrow pointing, so it's easy to figure out. It's a right tail test. You look at HA to see that. Look at HA here. Which way is that arrow pointing? It's pointing to the left. So in this scenario, we have a left tail test. So when you draw your little bell curve, you end up with a left tail procedure. So you will reject HO when the mean here, the sample mean is too low, right? So reject HO in that scenario. Okay, and then finally, we have this last scenario. And this scenario is a two-tailed scenario, a two-tailed scenario. And the idea behind this is simple. It's just simply that you know, the mean here, or the claim here, is that the mean is equal to some number, right? That it's exactly equal to some number. That means that, you know, it should be equal to the value in the middle, the hypothesized value in the middle. If we get sample data that's too low or too high, we're going to decide that it's not equal to the value that they say here in HO. So when we test HO in this scenario, we're testing that it actually is equal to the number they specify. If the number ends up being too high, our sample mean ends up being too high or too low, to believe that's true any longer, we'll reject the null hypothesis. All right, great. So those are the three scenarios. Very easy. Right tail test, left tail test, two tails, right? Just remember the two bars, two tails. And that's how you know the type of test you're going to be conducting. That means that if we're going to put alpha in the tail area, like we did at the end of that last video, if it's always going to be alpha in the tail areas, then what you're going to say is that here, you will have alpha in this tail. Here, you will have alpha in that tail. But in this scenario, you have alpha divided by 2 area in those tails. But still, the overall tail area is alpha, right? If you add these two together, alpha divided by 2 plus alpha divided by 2, half of alpha, half of alpha, you get alpha. Here you have alpha, here you have alpha. So let's talk about now how that relates to the probability of a type 1 error. So at the end of the last video, we kind of discussed this a little bit, but we're going to do it now. It's a very simple rule. For a one tail test, for a one tail test, the rule is essentially this, that you have at most alpha probability of committing a type 1 error. At most alpha probability of making a type 1 error.
that's for the one-tailed pest scenario. For the two-tailed pest scenario, in the two-tailed pest scenario, we're going to say we have exactly alpha probability of making a type 1 error. It's that simple. So it's just a simple rule to remember. And you could actually pair this up with what? Your symbols in HA, right? If HA has not equal to, we have this probability of committing a type 1 error, exactly alpha, right? If HA is less than or greater than, then we have this scenario. At most, alpha. And that's it. That's your rule. That's how you know the probability of committing a type 1 error for any hypothesis test you come across. Now, you may understand, well, why is it exactly, you may not understand why it's exactly alpha or why it's at most alpha in these scenarios. That's actually a pretty complicated thing to explain. I'm going to try now to explain this, but, you know, and explain it in a way that you'll understand. If you miss it, you don't get it, it's okay. Um, you can just memorize this, right? But let's try to understand it and explain it. Here's the basic idea. In a one-tailed test, where we're looking at the mean is, say, let's look at our example, right? Mean is greater than 4 versus the mean is less than or equal to 4. So this would be our HA and this would be our HO, right? Because this one has the equality. And we're always testing HO, right? Well, we said HO could take on several values and still be true. In other words, the mean could take on several values and still be true. In other words, the mean here could be anything from 0 to 4 inclusive. That would make this true. We're stopping at 0 because this problem was about, you know, of course, talking about um, completing a bachelor's degree, you couldn't finish before zero years. So otherwise, you go down to negative infinity up to four. But either way, the point is, is that we have this set of values. If the mean is any one of these values, HO is true. Well, when we worked out our problem, we considered the worst case scenario, the scenario where the mean was actually four, right? But, but there's always the possibility that you know, it could, in fact, be three, right? So what we did is we drew a bell curve, and we had the mean at 4 labeled here, and then we said, given that that's actually the mean, the probability of committing the error, we let that be 2.5%. Well, if the mean for x bar is truly 4, like we hypothesized it to be, if it is truly 4, then there is exactly a 2.5% chance of committing the type 1 error. But remember, we made the assumption that it would be 4. HO could still be true and have the mean be 3, couldn't it? And if that was the case, Think about it. We decide that we're going to reject here. This is where we're going to reject. If you go past this point, we're going to reject HO. Well, if that's what we're doing, our modeling, or that's how our test is being conducted. But let's say the real world data, and I'll use the black marker to express the real world scenario. Let's say the real world scenario is down here with a mean of 2, let's say. Let's say a mean of 2. Now think about it, if that's the real world curve, the curve that governs reality, if that's how reality really turns out, we don't know that though, so we let it, we assume that it's four, we set our critical value here, right? That's our critical value. On this black curve, that critical value is way over here, a very extreme area of the curve. Now we're only gonna reject HO if we get a critical, uh, 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 sorry, a sample mean that's way over here, right? That's the only way we reject. On this curve, on the green curve, it doesn't look like that'd be too hard to do. In fact, it'll happen 2.5% of the time. I mean, it's rare, but it's not that rare, right? But on this curve, this may happen very rarely. Like, it may happen only, you know, one in a million, right, times. So at that point, you'd say, wow, you know, it'd be a much smaller chance of committing the type 1 error, right? Because the real data, the sample data, would tend to come in around here, right? Sometimes you might get an extreme sample value. But on the green curve, that would still be in the do not reject region. The only way you would reject HO if the real mean was 2 is if you somehow got an X bar value way over here. That's not very likely to happen if the mean is really 2. So what that's saying is that the maximum chance of committing a type 1 error, the worst case scenario, is 2.5%. In any other option, if the, mean, if the real mean value is not 4, but it's any other number in here, 
that probability will be less. Now, in the case of this guy, we don't have that choice because what is the set, right? If I were to make the hypothesis this instead, if I were to say instead that I'm looking at the scenario, if I was looking at the scenario where the mean is equal to four versus not equal to four, well, how many numbers are in this set? There's just one. The only way this is true is if the mean is actually what? Four. You just have one value. So there isn't a way that it could be a different value. So when you set up your curve, and you make the hypothesis that the mean here in the middle is four, when you do that and you put your you know, rejection regions here, and you say that there's, you know, uh, let's say you decided that there's 1% in each tail, which would give you a total of 2%, there is no way that it could be anything else, right? Because you don't have any other flexibility and still have HO be true. If you're saying HO is that the mean is four, then the mean had better be four. If it's anything else, you're talking about HA, right? So in that case, you don't have that possibility that the mean could be something different and therefore change the probability structure. So that's why it's exactly in the two-tailed case, but only at most in the left or right-tailed case. So hopefully you understood this little discussion. If you didn't, again, it's not really that important. I would say that uh, it's probably you know one in a thousand stats, elementary stats students that really understand this. In fact, many, many, many of the elementary stats textbooks will not even say this. They'll just always say it's alpha. They don't even bother to explain that in a one-tailed test it's only at most alpha, and in a two-tailed test it's exactly alpha. So. Um, if, you didn't, if you didn't get this discussion, that's okay. You can just memorize these two rules. It's really simple.